G'day folks. Uh, tonight's little equipment autopsy is going to be one of the cash dispensers from one of the uh, NCR ATMs. Uh, it's out of a Persona series ATM. I cannot remember the exact model number. It should actually be in here. Basically one of these. One we're turning into a Doom Arcade. I need to uh, finish the sheet metal on this one so we can uh, vinyl wrap it with graphics. Uh, it's a class 5877 model 0101 so that's what it's out of um, as you can see some of this stuff's fairly non-stock <laughs> it's been heavily modified but this hasn't been modified uh, it does have belts off inside it and doesn't feed bills properly so I'm using this one as an example of a teardown for a teardown that one there still works fine belts are all on I've got three cassettes for it. Um, unfortunately, none of them came with cash in them. As you'd expect from an auction buyer, you'd expect them to clean it out first. It would be nice if one showed up one day with like half a cassette full, 50 grand or so. <laughs> probably wouldn't get away with it. And it'd probably have die packs installed in it still. But essentially, we'll start with a cassette. It's one of the most interesting bits, is what they put the money in. Uh, I believe a die pack lives in here. So I think as soon as you lift the lid, it might trigger it. There's probably a special tool that they insert first to uh, neutralize it. I don't really know how they do it. But basically, you've got a spring loaded follower, similar to that of a, um, a printer or a photocopier. Once you uh, load all the paper in, sometimes a, fo a follower springs up and pushes the paper uh, into place. A lot of the time it's a vertical elevator rather than a uh, horizontal one, but the principle's still the same. But if you pull that up and retract it, should lock back. No. There's a little notch back here to lock it, back, lock it at the rear while you load it but it's really hard to do one-handed, there's a knack to it. But I believe from schematics that I've seen, I've got an installation manual, and from what I've seen, the die pack lives in the top of this follower. And obviously, as soon as you open it without the proper tool to disable it, pop, it covers you and the money and everything else around you in a permanent, very nasty looking die. So, yeah. I guess if you had to make entry to one of these, you'd probably have to cut a hole in the side of it and carefully uh, extract the bills that way. Because uh, messing with die packs, not fun. I'm glad these never had them in them when we bought them. Um, you'd hope that they'd send them to graze online without die packs in them. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll probably jinx myself and open one and it's still got a pack in it. That would be uh, a hell of a video. Yeah, there you go. There's the part number on it. Very clear. But anyway, that's a, a um, cassette. There's a shutter in the front that's retracted by two long, very long skewers in the back here. They're probably about that long. As they're inserted into the uh, holes in here, these two, they draw that shutter down. At the moment, it's completely locked. You cannot force that. But once these two special skewers go in there, that shutter drops and exposes the bills at the front so little vacuum pickups can pull them out. Uh, that's the uh, back end of the cassette. There's really not much down there. It's just this and the other most important thing which goes with what you'll see on these boards here. There's a series of four reed switches. I've marked where they are on the front of this cover. And there's a series of slots in here with magnets. So you can see I've marked on this one where the magnets are. So they line up with the outermost two reed switches to tell it that it's $50 bills. That other one there is exactly the same. Same with the third one that's in the back of the car at the moment. Um, they're all exactly the same. So outermost two points is $50 bills. I'm guessing any combination of the others would be 20 And international currency is something different. These machines will handle any currency, essentially, any kind of um, printed bills, either pl paper or plastic. So, that's that. 
Um, checking date, that's the filling, the company that handles the filling. I'm not sure who it is. It could be um, Chubb or... Here's the other ones. Can't remember the other ones. Armour Guard, actually. Armour Guard do a lot of this stuff. So it could be them. But these are the prongs that are inserted into the uh, back of the cassette to lower that shutter. And you can see the vacuum pickups in the back here, but I'll pull one of them out separately and explain it. So that's the cassette. Another thing that's missing from this one is this. This is a re reject drawer. Basically, if the machine detects at any point that it's made a mistake in counting or a bill or multiple bills do not match a preset set of um, basically like thicknesses, widths, opacity, that sort of thing, uh, it will reject it straight into this tub here. So it can automatically detect counterfeit bills. It can automatically detect badly damaged bills or ones that are stuck together. If their thickness is slightly over what it should be, it will automatically reject. So, if two bills get stuck together, it should reject it. If two bill, if any bill is not correct, is too small or counterfeit, it will detect it. These machines rarely make mistakes. Now, I know people have commented previously in videos about getting the wrong currency, possibly because they didn't set, set the magnets on the um, box correctly, the cassette. Um, I don't know about two bills at once. Generally, if they're stuck together, unless there's a fault in the um, detection system, it won't give you two that are stuck together. It'll divert them back through these rollers and dump them in here. Well, they probably won't even get that far. It'll, um, it'll spit them out into here before they even get to the top part. The actual um, sprayer, I think they call it, the, the spitter. No, sorry, the sprayer's at the back. That sprays the bills into the collector, then it collects them spits them out after verification it spits them out through here uh, and again it has numerous numerous little sensors on the way out I think there's more underneath as well yeah there are so there's eyes everywhere on what's going on and I'd be willing to bet if the stacks not right before it gets to this point it could also tell that too and probably with pull it back and um, drop it into the reject bin because there's no there's no other real way for it to go back. It has to, um, it'd have to reverse. I don't know. I don't have a, f I think I do actually have a full technical manual on it. I've just never bothered reading it all. There's plenty of online stores that have uh, e-manuals you can buy for like eight or nine bucks each that explain how ATMs work. And there's the manufacture date, 2007. It's not all that old, but it's an old design. It's definitely obsolete. They're running a lot of these out uh, on Grays Online and other auction sites. There's a few on eBay that, well, the guy's asking way too much for them. He wants 150 bucks each and he says they're locked. So good luck getting that one open without a grinder. Uh, not worth 150 bucks in my opinion. So, yeah, let's get into it. We'll start with the top. These all come apart in separate sections too. They're modular. You can replace this pair of cassette um, dispenser mechanisms, or this pair, or the top half, the top or top third. Okay, as far as the smarts of it are concerned, it's running an Intel embedded processor, a 386, 33 megahertz. It appears to have pinout um, test points all the way around it, which is nice. Uh, one thing I didn't do before we butchered the old loom to uh, make a new one was get the um, the voltage pin outs on this one so I can't even put voltage to it and start poking it with signals and things. Um, it's got two Xilinx Spartan FPGAs on it. That's probably a, um, a flash chip or something like that. That'll can probably contain any... Um, it'll be a ROM, EEPROM or something like that. Well, more like CMOS actually. It's more like... yeah that'll be a CMOS and the rest of these are... Um, the brains of the business and the main processor. Those two there are stepping motor drivers, same with those two. Lots of protection um, against, well, anything, shorting, outside intrusion. Uh, nice big backup battery in it. Again, this is all 
it's all SDC based, secure data com or something like that. It's a special thing. Uh, everything, everything in this machine, including the card reader, the cash dispenser, and everything in between, the pin pad, it's all connected through SDC. So it's possible to reverse engineer it. It's not something I want to go into. I don't know anything about it. Julian could probably do it, but he doesn't want to either. It's not what we're into. We're not going to tell you how to hack into an ATM. This is just how a basic rundown on how it works. So I know people are asking, oh, why don't you go into the details about how it talks to itself? That'd be kind of silly. I know you can probably get away with it on a technicality, but I don't want to teach people how to rip off ATMs. Breaking into SDC bus is possible. It's not a smart thing to do on the internet. So stop asking. <laughs> and no, I'm not publishing images of the ghost CDs or anything like it. You're not getting the CDs, you're not getting anything like it to do with this part of the uh, system. We're going to convert it into an ATM or an arcade and the remaining two units and the other two, three cash dispensers, well, who knows what we're going to do with them. Probably pillage them for parts as well. I want to keep one working example in my collection. Everything else um, can just be scrapped essentially, just pulled apart. But yeah, we've got various stepping drivers, stepper motors. Um, that was a, reg a regular COM port option, which is not installed. Uh, there's the crystal for it. So that option for a regular COM port, if it had a regular COM port on it, Julian could get into it straight away and um, drive these stepping motors and actually make it spew out cash whenever you win a game. But it's missing a lot of that and trying to reverse engineer this is a lot harder than it would be to just make up some... Uh, independent controllers, just get some Arduinos or something like that and just make our own little stepper controller. You only need so many of them, it doesn't need to have all the optical sensors or any of that bullshit. All you need is about four four stepper drivers, a couple of um, real, solid state relays to trigger the uh, front shutter solenoids and um, trigger for the SSR for the main motor because you put 12 volts or 5 volts or anything across that and the main motor comes to life. Uh, yeah, it's really, really simple just to make it into a, uh, a novelty thing rather than something serious. Yeah, make it spew out Monopoly money. At least that one there anyway. It's amazing how much work goes into these things. I'd like to see a 1980s ATM. This is pretty modern. This is really simplified. It's like the equivalent of a modern photocopier compared with one from the 80s. I want to see a really old ATM. I bet you there's a lot more in them. Okay, well the cassette mechanism is quite interesting. Not only does it have pins to lower the shutters, you can see them up here for the above one, but it's also got a mechanism to make absolutely sure that this follow is unlocked. Um, there's actually a screw blocking it at the moment, but if I were to push it all the way in, this rod here would go all the way up inside and trip the um, catch on the bottom of the follower. It won't go any further because it's blocked, but you can see how it works. Very nice. Got to take that out. It slams forward. And you can see the shutters down there now. And that plastic rod's all the way at the back. You can't even force it by hand once it's all in there. It needs those little special tabs. They're like the special removal tools for some car head units. They come with a pair of key things to unlock the uh, frame that it sits in. Without them, you're struggling to get it out. It's not impossible, but again, it's not something... It's all that easy without the uh, proper tools. So there you go, that's the cassette mechanism loading anyway. We'll have a look at the internals once I start splitting this apart into its uh, separate groups, which I should start doing now. Very neat. There's two stepping motors in here. Oh, yeah, that's dispensing or rejecting, I think. Yeah, I believe that's in position to dispense and that's in position to reject or vice versa. Yeah, 
yeah, that pinch that pinches it between the belts and actually uh, pulls it through here to the reject bin. That one there. Oh, that operates a pickup. So if the bills are correct, this little pickup will come along. I think so. It pushes it up. Huh? What are you doing? It'd be interesting to actually see one running as it should, but right now I just I can only speculate at what it does. But that's to do with um, yeah, that'll be to do with delivering the bills to the dispenser itself. And the other one on the other side, the other stepping motor, is to uh, trigger a reject condition or a um, presentation condition, because it's obviously called a presenter, not a uh, dispenser. It's the, pre the presenter unit. It presents the bills to you. Um, yeah. Cool. That's actually break this thing down for, for once. Been rambling about 10 minutes or so and haven't really actually pulled it apart. Oh well. There's a lot to it. I'm trying to cram everything I can into this video because I don't think I'll be doing another one. There are plenty of other things to do at the moment so let's do it while we can. Also more sensors down here. Those eyes would tell when it's actually picked up a bill. Passes through there, breaks the uh, light beam between that one and the one below it. Uh, they're just little invisible, like miniature door beams essentially. It can tell when something passes by it. There's another one up there for the bottom of this. There's another one in there with its little receiver, or one will be transmit, one will be receive. Although the stationary one could even be a mirror. Oh no, it's got wires going to it. Yeah, they'll all be infrared. It's sending infrared pulses when it detects a break in the signal, it knows that something has passed it by. If it doesn't pass by in the correct amount of time or has holes through it, it will obviously throw up an error. Like if you had a bill full of holes, well, it's going to go pop, pop, pop with the signal and uh, probably spit it back to the uh, reject bin. Likewise, if the bill's not wide enough and it breaks the beam too early, well, it'll also think something's a bit sus and go reject. That's why you sometimes hear the ATM whirring away a lot longer than normal. It'll sound like it's ready to start presenting, but it'll stop pause for a bit, make more whirring as it rejects the bills to the box and then uh, comes up with another transaction which, uh, or another um, stack of bills which should hopefully be correct that time. Fascinating machines, they're very smart, very very smart. Okay so this is the main vacuum pump and main drive motor all in one. There's the pump, very small piston pump, vacuum hose, Air outlets basically straight to atmosphere. There it is. There. Um, yeah, that's pretty much standard. It's a 1750 RPM AC motor, possibly synchronous. I imagine. I don't know. Doesn't say synchronous motor. It's solid state relay. A bit overkill. 25 amps and uh, run capacitor for it, 10 mic one run capacitor for the motor so that's definitely a keeper the rest of this is gradually coming apart and getting various belts and other bits that I may never use but still hanging around for a little while the only thing I can think that champion fuel filter is for is actually a uh, vacuum reserve because the end's capped off I'm thinking it's a very well calculated vacuum reserve just enough to get it to trigger and pick up a bill but not enough to do double up, uh, double up a pickup uh, that's about it. Various belts, they're not reinforced, they're fairly stretchy. I'll get the uh, presenter mechanism off. Plenty of good guide rods and things. Remove some more of those circlips and uh, pull them out. And rubber drive wheels, things like that. These little drive wheels and rods and things are going into stock for uh, this lathe stuff. Shit that I can turn up. These cambered plastic drive wheels, plenty of them. Um, yeah, there's an interesting looking black box down there. It says Toshiba on it and it has an SDC ribbon going to it so I'm guessing that's a uh, bill verification scanner or something. 
because it's right where the bills come up from the cassettes. It's the first thing they hit is that black box. That's going to be interesting. I didn't think there was that much extra smart stuff in here, but it's not just little sensors and eyes like those ones. It's actually, there's something else in there. There's a, a validation unit. So that'll be cool. You can see the main drivetrain, the main, main power transmission is uh, built to last. It's got precision roller bearings in all of the main power transmission gears and uh, particularly ones that have belts on them. Anything that's under tension from a, uh, a timing belt is uh, fitted with roller bearing races rather than plastic on steel or bronze bushes. They all uh, have these greased roller bearings. Um, most of the time like photocopiers and things run sintered bronze bushes or just acetal um, gears on the shaft on directly which is a good plastic. Acetal is a good hard wearing plastic but for uh, ultimate longevity this is what you want. They don't skip. Even if the bearing fails it'll rub on the shaft but it'd take a hell of a lot of abuse for it to uh, fail completely and cause skipping of the uh, belt pretty cool stuff. God there's a lot of belts in here. I'm not going to be salvaging all of this. There's really not much point. Some of the more of the rod material would be alright. Some of the timing belts but that's about it. But I figured out, what, I'm pretty sure I know what this guy does. This is a, what I thought was a um, validator. Well it is of sorts. I'm guessing this is thickness. These little ball bearing wheels are spring loaded. I'm guessing there's a, uh, a load cell or something in there because they run on these two here. It's all very rigidly mounted in ball bearing races. And I'm guessing it's to do with detecting doubled up bills. Because uh, that'll have a very sensitive uh, load cell on it. Let's pop the cover off and have a look. That's the part. Yeah, that's what it is there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's the thickness detector. Doesn't really have load cells, it's like inductive. These are two magnets on here. And as they travel up and down inside that little uh, coil essentially on the PCB, it must uh, send, must vary uh, the feedback signal going to these, uh, the, well, the main processor, I guess. What would you call that? Feedback loop, something like that. I don't know. That's really neat, though. It's a neat bit of kit. Very precise, obviously. Has to be. And two little VRs to uh, adjust it if something, one of the sensors goes out of uh, calibration. And yeah. Two little wheels that pinch the notes, and one it only has to travel the thickness of a uh, of a note or a bill to uh, send a different signal to the uh, the processor. It's pretty cool stuff. Okay, so in the back section, apart from the shaft, some of the shafts and belts, there isn't a lot that I'm going to salvage on oh, the solenoids, the pneumatic fittings. Uh, they don't have a pressure rating on them. I hope they're not only good for vacuum. It looks like it though. They're only light plastic, not brass, but definitely very useful. Um, yeah, low count in indicators. Just low cash in the uh, cassettes. Here's one of the mechanisms. Suction cups. Pick the bill off and shove it into these rollers as they're rotating. Got flats on them that catch the uh, edge and then pull it in. Spits it into these belts as they're running. Very simple. Smart. Simple. Oops, I left the player running. It sounds like there's a small war in the background. I like the modular design. I'll give them that much. Did a pretty good job of it. 
Let's get one of these boards off and have a look at it. These have the reed switches to tell levels and things like that. And those clips are remarkably tight. You need a big screwdriver to pop them. And they snap together very well. Alright, well, I'm almost at the end, I think. At least for this one, anyway. There's going to be plenty more, so don't worry. If I miss something, I can revisit it either non-destructively with that one, or if these pieces are still floating around when I, uh, I've uploaded this, I'll be able to go back and have a look. But, yeah, these are little reed switches. I tell the machine how much currency is in the uh, box. or well, not so much how much, but what kind. There's one set of four for each cassette. Each one of these stacks holds two cassettes. Some interesting little componentry on it. Well, not that interesting, but it's uh, still very overbuilt. Very well made. Copyright 2005 NCR. Yeah, it's the main two processor chips. It seems like each bank of reed switches has a processor. Fuse, protection, that one's the same. More of the same. Yeah, reed switches. Magnet passes it, or, or proximity to magnets make the little reeds close. So, uh, yeah, very low current, but good for triggering uh, trigger signals for various devices. Security systems use them on uh, door switches and things like that, tamper switches, uh, the little plastic blocks that you mount on your windows or roller doors or things like that with a wire going to them. One of them doesn't have a wire on it because it's a permanent magnet. The one with the wire has one of these in it. So it's a, actually a um, tamper switch. Ah, this is the easy way to get to my uh, fuel money for tomorrow. Come on. I think it's actually really hard. <laughs> There's two little fingers in there. There's even little brushes in there. There we go. No more money. Yeah, that's my fuel money for tomorrow. You can't stay in there. But yeah. Interesting. It's also got a... Uh, what is that? It says low LED. Oh, that's it there. I don't know what that is. Oh, wait. It's probably... Oh, I can't see it in there. There's probably a magnet in that strip there, under there. I'd say that's what's in there. There's probably a little sensor to tell that the cassette's been inserted uh, without the presence of a magnet or something like that in there. Yeah, I don't know. Can't tell. It's all got a lot of different levels of redundancy and protection. It's crazy. Even for something this modern, I'm surprised at just how many bits there are in it and how much there is to pull apart. There's a crazy amount of componentry in it. So I'll give it a final pick for um, shaft material, that sort of thing, but most of it's going to end up in the bin. Can't see myself using much of it. Anyway, that's the end of that one, and uh, thanks for watching.